Alright guys, today we're talking about Odin again. Uh, I've been playing this ship a little bit more recently and uh, I really like it. Um, I think it's quite underrated, or at least I underrated it um, during my review. I don't really remember what my uh, final conclusion was on the Odin, but I think it was a little bit of uh, disappointment that there it didn't have a little bit more HP to tank with. but. Um, since then, I've been playing around with builds and trying to figure out how to play it, and I think I've figured it out. It's, it sure feels like that. Um, first of all, you're not a battleship. Don't think of yourself as a battleship. You need to think of yourself like a battle cruiser, like um, like the Alaska is a good example of the playstyle, or perhaps a well, the Aegir or the Siegfried are good good examples at tier nine as well, where you have some armor. You have some health, but not a ton to work with, and you're a target of opportunity type of ship. So like here, I pushed in and used the island to push up undetected, and then we caught this North Carolina out. As you can see, we dealt, you know, 25k to him and killed him with our secondaries even. Um, and you know after going out and maneuvering a bit and staying dark now we're pushing in again and I'm trying to take some shots here at this Amagi which he turns out that's fine but we're still pushing in because we have access to our consumables that's kind of the biggest thing is you need to have your damage control and your heal ready to go um, when you're trying to push in and simply because this ship has really good concealment um, you can do this kind of push in, pull out, push in, pull out type of deal. All this smoke here is letting me get a nice shot on this Atlanta. See? Nice little citadel, bit of damage from our secondaries, and he's hurting a little bit. Um, that's kind of what you want to do. And you see how I turn out right away? Just trying to stay angled. Just trying to stay angled, trying not to take huge amounts of damage extra. And Atlanta slows down, it's a pretty easy shot. He's on a no health anymore. And there we go. We kill him. It's a good ship. And once you get into late game scenarios and you have some health left, boy is this a scary ship to face. Because in one-on-one -on -one scenarios, it is so hard to kill this ship. Um, when you don't have help of a bunch of fire spamming cruisers from the back or um, DDs constantly torping, all those things. This ship is scary to deal with, as this Florida is about to find out. I mean, of course, he's caught in a crossfire from my whole team, so that is something to keep in mind as well. But we're losing pretty badly in this game, um, so we need to get onto some cabs and we need to start getting some kills back. Um, and I think we can do that with the Odin, especially with this much health remaining. Um, our secondaries, uh, in case you didn't know, all pen 32mm base, so you don't need to take much for captain skills in order to get a really, really good um, secondary armament. All these shells going out from our secondaries will pen battleship bows and sterns, and if they have weak armor, weaker armor um, elsewhere, it will pen that as well, which is really nice. Of course, it'll pen superstructures. And since we don't need to take IFHE for it, we can set fires with those um, guns as well. Um, as you can see, you can still take some AP pens through your superstructure, but it's actually not too bad. Um, the ship is quite tanky when angled, and the fast reloading 305mm guns are really, really a blast to use. Um, I've been finding I'm enjoying ships with faster reloads more. Even if I get less damage out of each reload, I'm enjoying just being able to shoot more often out of the battleship. So if you like that, um, if you liked original Sharnors, you're going to really like this ship, I think. Um, you do have to watch out a little bit when it comes to tier 10 games, but we'll get into that um, in the next match here. But for now, as you can see against cruisers, the guns are nasty. They're quite difficult to deal with. And despite us not being able to really do much to an angled Prince Eugen with our main guns, with AP for example, um, our secondaries are kind of just tearing them up. Solved, so that's another really nice part about 
to the ship is you're able to shoot at multiple targets at once. Um, as you can see, we bounced off the New Orleans. So, but our secondaries are still applying pressure. So further on in this game, um, we've pretty much won this game at this point. So I'm gonna just kind of push in. As you can see, I've already got 140k damage. That's pretty nice. Um, it's and now it's just kind of like okay, we can YOLO because the game's pretty much won. We don't need to play as safe, so we can take more 2v1s, 3v1s, that type of deal, and risk our ship a little bit more. As you saw, I was trying to fight one versus one using that rock on the right hand side there. Um, yeah, I actually just played my 40th game in this ship, so that puts me on the leaderboard, and we're comfortably at least on North America in first place. So I'd like to think uh, I do know how to play this ship <laughs> at this point. So as you can see against even a Bismarck we can do some pretty nasty damage uh, assuming all the shells pen. So I like this ship. I, I didn't really like it for the first few games but that's because I was trying to play it more like a Massachusetts and it's not a Massachusetts. Massachusetts gets the super fast heal, it gets really good armor, it gets really really good main guns, its secondary is more accurate, so you gotta play it differently. And um, that was kind of my bad for not playing it, or not playing this ship like a unique experience, like it is. So, the nice thing is, the other nice thing about this ship is you get a Hydro, which of course German Hydro is amazing. You're going to see that all throughout these clips. I'm trying to save my Hydro for key times where I know I'm going to be pushing into a DD or a cruiser with torpedoes. And because this ship's so small and maneuverable, you're actually able to deal with torps pretty well. Um, unfortunately, you don't have much health, so you do need to dodge torps. Um, but they're not too bad to deal with. I find taking a fighter plane is nice you don't really need more range than 19 kilometers in this ship and i've found that the fighter can sometimes deter cvs and you know you have a decent aa armament you know we have a aa defense expert in this game um so your aa is not bad it's just not like gonna bother a tier 10 cv really so i take the plane to kind of deter cvs from really focusing super hard since the spotter is not really going to do much for a ship like this. Especially since I take a lot of secondary build type stuff. Um, here you can see I've actually changed my build that previous game. I didn't have Concealment Expert. And now I do. And you can see we have a 12 kilometer detect with 11.6 kilometer secondary range. So I get to control the engagement here. That's the really, really nice part about Odin with this build is you completely get to control the engagement and when to shoot, when to open up and all that stuff and when to not. So that last game was a more of a push in, pull out, push in, pull out kind of target of opportunity thing. This game we're gonna play it like a Des Moines almost. Like we're gonna hug an island, we're gonna play next to a camp and see what happens. You'll also notice I'm shooting a lot of HE because Against battleships at long range, it the AP is not great. You're not accurate enough. You're not. You don't have enough pen to really deal some massive damage. So we're just looking for fires, honestly. And you'll see that because fire damage is so broken in this game, even an Odin can spam HE and get some pretty solid re results. Um, you'll see me do that a lot early game because I'm trying to stay relatively healthy early game so late game I can have some pretty massive uh, pretty massive brawls in this ship late game just because I've saved my health pool for later as you can see broadside Iowa I should probably be switching to AP but um, it's kinda hit and miss with this ship whether you're gonna deal some massive damage or not it's it's not terribly consistent but thanks to your secondaries and torpedoes and all these other things that you have access to for dealing damage, you don't really need your main guns to be that incredible. So playing like a Des Moines, holding rocks like this can work really well, especially because you have Hydro, so you're more than likely not going to get yellowed by a destroyer. Or if you are, you should know about it. And again, this is a tier 10 game, 
as and it's not all tier 10 but it's some tier 10 ships and this is kind of how i like to play it it's either this or in the next game you're going to see how i like to play as well which is a more passive kiting style playing it like a cruiser because this ship can dodge shells pretty well um, i'm actually running a propulsion mod on it right now because i really just want to mitigate the shells hitting entirely instead of dealing with um, slightly less fire duration, that kind of thing. So you see here, we switch to AP. It's okay, I might be able to Citadel him, but our dispersion isn't the most favorable thing in the world. So, that's fine. Honestly, 37k in the first five minutes, 38k in the first five minutes, That that's pretty solid, honestly. Especially when you consider average Odin damage is not that great. And this is tier 8 battleship after all, so um, you don't need a ton of HP or a ton of damage to really do well in this ship, at least compared to the average players. So here we're gonna move up. Um, you're gonna see we really want to stay angled a little better than this because Iowa can just shoot right into our side and pen us, or actually our super structure I think is what it's actually, uh, what he's actually penning. But once you stay angled enough, you're actually pretty tanky. Amagi gets another nice shot into us here. A full pen. But uh, back to the build. Um, this is kind of the build I would recommend. I think you definitely need double concealment. I think playing this ship as a 12 kilometer detect battleship gives you opportunities to sneak up on people. It gives you opportunities to deal with cruisers. You essentially have a heavy cruiser detect. Which is kind of nuts, because it allows you, in a later game, we'll see this a little bit, where you can essentially spot a heavy cruiser at the same time they spot you. And then because of that, you're just already in secondary range, so you're just already peppering them with secondaries. So, And those secondaries are guaranteed to pen 32mm, so it's, it's this really nice, um, this nice kind of relationship there between your secondaries and your detection range. Um, as you can see, we've cleaned up the one line, or at least my team did. We're at 70k damage already, which is pretty nice. So now we're going to start pushing in, and you'll notice I don't push straight at them. That's the Yamato, and Yamatos are pretty scary, even though we have armor. You can see what he just did to that Prince Wagon. We, uh, we don't really want to deal with that. Not yet, at least. Um, so we're going to push around behind the island try and deter this Edinburgh, or if he pops around the corner, we'll just blap him. Because these guns are really good against cruisers. Um, they're small enough that they're not going to just overpin all the time like most battleship guns do. They're like, fortunate enough to get three citadels there. A nice little devastating strike. Love to see those. And because we're smartly using our concealment and our um, islands around us, we weren't spotted until we took that shot on the Edinburgh, and now we're undetected again because of the islands. So, it really is a ship that let, wants to be played like a cruiser. You can tank from time to time, as you're going to see us do here in a little bit, but it's not really what this ship is best at. This ship is best at running around being a terror to the enemy team, and as you're going to see, being in a cap zone like this one that gives us an island, well, our hydro just gives us so much information, and well, a gearing in a smoke three kilometers from an Odin who just popped hydro is not gonna, he's not gonna have a very good time. As you can see, the secondaries just chew him up at these ranges. <laughs> so, we don't actually end up getting the kill, our anchorage pops out and gets him, but hey. Taking a full health tier 10 battleship or DD off the board is pretty good in my book for uh, for just a tier 8 battleship. So we're going to pop out here and try and use islands again. Sometimes you're going to see that secondaries don't really play nice with islands, as in they don't just they just don't shoot over them. Period. Um, but here, for some reason, these islands are fine, so we can shoot over them with our secondaries, which is nice. And because that gearing popped smoke, we're not lit here, so we get a nice little free bit of damage here with our secondaries. Um, and the main target you want to be shooting at with your secondaries is the biggest target around. Whatever is the biggest target to hit, that's what you want to hit. Just because your accuracy isn't like Massachusetts or Ohio, you 
want to be shooting at something that's big so you can hit a lot of shells because your shells have high pen. Um, as you can see, 10k damage from Yamato, it kind of hurts. Um, but we got a heal and we can go dark again. There's a DD right in front of us, so I'm a little, little bit nervous of that. <laughs> so we're just going to back out of this situation, hopefully before uh, the gearing smoke dissipates. Because our Hydro's about to run out, and that's not good when the Destroyer probably torped at you. So this is kind of how I like to play this ship late game, is finding an island where I can find these 1v1s like you saw last game and this game. I'm trying to isolate fights with islands and at close range. Preferably near a cap. That's what we're looking to do, because, well of course, holding mid like this is so strong. There's our confederate, 145k damage, pretty nice. Pretty nice so far. And realistically, I should just stay here. I, actually, I should back out even more. Because we see that Ostergotland is turned in on the minimap. And, well, he's likely coming to YOLO torp us or just torp us. And I didn't see that, so I pushed forward just a little bit. Um, there we activated um, Luchin's. And pushing forward here means we take a bunch of damage from the Amato. And because Ostergotland has, I think, 85 knot torps, um, yeah, there's no way we can back out of this situation. So just that one little mistake of putting our acceleration on just to quarter speed for a second, just to get our back turret off, got us killed. So little mistakes like that can add up uh, to big things. So I should have, you know, tried to play a little safer behind the island especially since there's a tier 10 battleship and a tier 9 destroyer on my doorstep. Um, but that was still a pretty solid game against tier 10, I'd say. Especially for a ship that has essentially half the health of that Yamato. <laughs> so now here, this game is very interesting because we don't have a lot of help on this flank. Um, we are top tier, which is... Or actually, no, we're mid-tier in this one. Tier 9s, I think, are here? Yeah. So we're mid-tier, so we're not super strong, but we're not super weak. Um, as long as you're not facing tier 10, it's a pretty good time, actually, in Odin. Tier 10's kind of rough to deal with, but last game, as you saw, it can deal with it. Um, here we're playing it like a cruiser. We're playing this like a heavy cruiser, where you see how I'm angling before I shoot. We're shooting only when we're angled. We're trying to go dark in between shots. Um, we're trying to use islands to cover ourselves as much as possible, so we're even not lit here. And you'll see I'm shooting a lot of HE. As that's what you gotta do against angled battleships at range. That's just... You can't not shoot HE. Uh, you can't afford not to, at least. Because, as you're gonna see in this one, it gets a little, little rough. Uh, my team kind of just hangs back, and their team pushes pretty hard here, which is, which is cool. Um, it's really nice to see a team push, but... It's uh, a little rough when you don't have a ton of support. <laughs> but that's the nice part about this ship, is you see our concealment allows us to just stay dark here. We don't have to open up if we don't feel like it. So we can wait for our guns to turn, we can wait and then shoot at a destroyer that just got lit, and he has no idea we're actually here aiming at him. Right, it's, it's so nice. And you'll see me constantly using my rudder and my um, engine, essentially, to dodge cell shells. So, we actually haven't taken a hit yet, and we have over, uh, 300,000 potential damage. Another salvo comes in, and we dodged it as well. So, this ship played at these 15 kilometer ish ranges is actually maneuverable enough to dodge ship's, uh, shells. And you're going to want to do that, because um, like I said, it's so important to keep your health pool high till late game. That's that's crucial. Especially in scenarios like this, where you've got like five or six ships all chasing you down on a flank, and some of them are higher tier than you, <laughs> right? Like, it's a little rough like that. So, again, we turn out, we potentially slow down, like we are now, and you'll see, we can just... We can dodge a lot of shells. People don't expect a battleship to be this maneuverable. Now their shared dispersion helped us, but we're still approaching half a million potential damage without actually eating any damage ourselves. So that's pretty good, I think. 
And as you can see, we keep going dark in between reloads. This must be super frustrating for the enemy team to deal with me because they're not hitting me, they're not doing damage to me, and I've already dealt 25k back to them. And I'm the one controlling the engagement because I'm choosing when I get lit, I'm choosing what I shoot at, all these things. So it, to me, Odin feels like a very high skill-based ship. Very skill-based ship. You have low health, so if you mess up, you die. Essentially. Essentially, that's what's supposed to happen with this thing. But, if you play it to its strengths, it is really strong. It is really strong, and I'll give you a little spoiler. This game ends up being a 230, 240k game, something like that. Um, I cut off some of the end of it just because it was a little boring at the end, but we'll get into... Uh, a little more, more brawling here in a second. Because um, as you can see, they are pushing down the 9-10 line. And we have no presence there. And I'm worried at this point that we're going to get stuck in the bottom left-hand corner of the map. Because as you can see, they have 1-2 and two line control as well. So we have to make a play to not be flanked on all sides. right? We can't afford to lose both flanks like this, like we are doing. So now that we've saved our health up, it's time to start pushing in. As you can see, two tier 9 battlecruisers are pushing down the 910 line. We've seen shots from the Alabama. In fact, the Alabama spotted backing up. So it is literally just us versus these two supercruisers. So here, we're using that little trick of not getting spotted until they're already in secondary range and spotting the... Um, the ships as they spot us. So that's a nice little trick, and we catch this Azuma completely off guard. He makes a YOLO turnout because he knows he can't deal with my secondaries. His HU does hurt us, by the way. Um, that's why I'm trying. I was trying to avoid it so much Earth game because <laughs> it does hurt a lot. And against cruisers, these guns are pretty nice. Battleships not so much, but against cruisers, they're very nice. And of course, we have our secondaries on them, and they all pen his armor wherever they hit as well, which is pretty nice. So we'll end up, as you can, that's, that is some hard hitting HE, but our reload is pretty nice and he's beach broadside to us, so he goes down. Now here, we want to help a little bit on the California. Um, the egg gear might still push into us if we, uh, if we don't focus him. We're trying to get him to be a little bit closer and um, we want him to fall into this exact same trap that the Azuma just fell into. Um, torping because if he goes full speed it's possible he reaches those torps if he just kind of full yellows into us but that doesn't quite happen and I mean the torp reload on the ship is so fast you can afford to throw them out when it's like okay in this super hypothetical situation he could hit eat these. Um, it's okay to do that just because your torps reload so fast. Unfortunately, we uh, we eat a torp here from, I think, the Ostergotland, so it wasn't actually too bad. But uh, on a ship with 52,000 health, 7,000 damage, unhealable, still hurts. Still hurts, so yeah, eating torps is a really, really bad one. So here, I'm a little bit worried to push in because I don't know where that Ostergotland is. Um, you can tell if a DD is close to you when there's nothing within your detect range, right? But this egg gear is well within my detect range, so I'm nervous that that destroyer is just sitting at six kilometers waiting to launch another set of torps at me, so um, that's why I'm not turning back in super hard on this guy. If I knew the DD wasn't here, I would turn in and chase him down because I don't want to let him get away. Um, and I decide eventually, eh, he probably would have had his next set of torps launched already because the torp reloads so fast on these European GPs that I can risk turning, especially because I have Hydro up. Um, I probably could have turned a little sooner, but uh, yeah, the egg gear gets away unfortunately for now. Um, and here we're going to see I'm calling for help from our CV because I don't know where the DD is. And it turned out he wasn't actually near me because as soon as my detection reset, I wasn't lit. So it was fine, and it turns out he was actually heading to B. He just launched some temporary torps at me or something like that. There you go. 
some aircraft carriers can be citadel by this thing, so that's pretty nice. Catching an aircraft carrier off guard like that, I'm not sure why he was sitting in the open. Probably didn't expect us to push back on the 910 line. And that's kind of the nice part about this ship, is you can surprise people just by your concealment, like you saw against those two cruisers earlier. But ships that are looking, you know, bigger ships that are more focused on other sides of the map, they might have thought, on at least their team, that they had the 910 line under control. And just by myself pushing back and surprising the enemy like that, perhaps, maybe, changed how the game went. Um, we might have still won if uh, we had all grouped up, but I think, I think us pushing back on the 910 line like that really helped us win this game. Because um, they are well ahead on points and caps at this point, so I think we might have lost, actually, had I not done that. CV goes down, which is so nice, because that just gives us free reign to, you know, charge into people without CV spotting us and doing all these concealment fun things, fun runs like that, but uh, I'm cutting off the end of the game because it didn't actually, it was just boring, I just capped a couple points and then we won because we ended up killing them all. So that was a pretty fun one though. Um, it, it felt like I was kind of outplaying people there. It felt like my decisions actually mattered in that last game, which was nice. And that's why I like this ship, is it feels like your decisions actually matter. Um, it's your fault if you take a lot of damage, and if you are... In, in general, if you position well, you're going to get a lot of damage out of this ship. Because the secondaries are pretty consistent. Um, this game is an anomaly. I'm going to be honest, this game shouldn't happen. This game is when nobody shoots at you. This is what happens when nobody shoots at you. You're just allowed to freely push the entire time. And it's hilarious because, well, this ship has super long range secondaries and guns that reload really quickly. So if you get on a flank of someone in secondary range, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna put some pain on some people. <laughs> So here, as you can see, this was an older bit replay. Um, I'm actually not running concealment in this one on my captain. So we have, I think fire prevention is what I was running. And for the most part, you don't really need fire prevention because you're not tanking and on fire all the time. You're kind of just in and out of spotting like a cruiser. And so if you have to use your damage control, well, you're probably not in spotting range of the enemy or you can get behind an island you're hiding next to all these things so that when you pop your damage control take that fire off your ship you shouldn't be getting shot at by anybody else that's why i'm not really taking fire prevention or basics of survivability um these days at least and i'm also not taking the damage control system in the upgrade slot i'm taking propulsion mod so that i can tuck behind islands better all these different nice things uh, Edinburgh broadside, six kilometers. Um, hmm. This ship is good against cruisers. <laughs> the AP is really good against cruisers. <laughs> and it tends to stick in their ship rather than overpenning, which is really nice. It's really nice after playing so many tier 10 battleships where it's like, oh, broadside cruiser, ah, I overpenned his citadel for no damage. That's nice. And here, um, well, we kind of just outdo Ignize now. There's not much he can do. His guns aren't very accurate, so he's not going to be getting good hits on our superstructure. If he pushes into us, well, we have more Torps than him, and we have Hydro. So that's not a, that's a no-go. And if he sits at these ranges, well, our secondaries just get to pepper him. So it it's it's rough for uh, Nize now, or a Sharnhorse for that matter, to fight you. <laughs> Sharnhorse will do a little better because he can switch to HE and hit your superstructure a little more reliably, but as you can see, we still don't have 100,000 potential damage in this game, and <laughs> we're just hard pushing <laughs> their home base um, that they had, like, because you get A and B for each team, respectively, at the start of the game. Normally, this is a really hard cap to take, but they just kind of gave it up for free. Um, so... I like this ship, guys. Um, I'm going to do a little mini conclusion now as, as this game winds down. You'll see us kind of 
get a hold of these carriers in a little bit, which is what I was really going for this game. But, yeah, this ship is good. Um, I'm assuming, well, you can't really get it anymore. If you got it from the event, I'd give it a try. Um, try it with a concealment build with range on the secondaries, and then try and implement these strategies of playing like a heavy cruiser, dodging really hard with your rudder and your propulsion. Try playing farther back at the start and then pushing in later on once you have uh, health to work with and there's not as many ships that can focus you. All these things lead to really good games in the Odin. Really, really, really solid games in the Odin. Um, the only bad games I've had is where I just YOLO push at the beginning or I get focused by a carrier in a tier 10 game. Um, those those matches suck, but because you because of your concealment, you can kind of just disengage really nice and easily. It's really nice to have a battleship, you know, kind of pocket battleship, I guess you'd say this thing is. I don't know what the actual term is, but a battleship with nice concealment, small guns that fire fast, is kind of nice to play actually. Um, I way prefer this ship over Tirpitz or Bismarck, that's for sure. Those ships are harder to dodge with, they eat more damage at random weird angles, um, they have worse concealment so they struggle to disengage or to get within secondary range. It's really hard for them to do those things. Um, you have to choose Hydro on the Bismarck or Torps on the Tirpitz. Um, I find, on it, honestly, I find despite this ship having nearly 20,000 health less, than the Tirpitz and Bismarck. I find this ship tankier than those two. Simply because you've got a tiny little superstructure with, you can see there's a gap in it. So even if you're flat broadside, sometimes ships just miss your superstructure by going through it. Um, and that's pretty funny. Whereas Tirpitz and Bismarck, that superstructure is nearly the size of your entire ship in an Odin. So <laughs> nobody's missing that and nobody's gonna not get a fire on you. It, it's just guaranteed you're going to be always on fire, always eating all this damage through your superstructure. Um, AP pens through your superstructure are nasty in Turpitz Bismarck. And not really in this ship as much, just because it's so small and kind of hard to hit, and shells don't really stick within the superstructure. So, versus a Massachusetts, you're going to struggle. Um, Massachusetts is still, I think, the best battleship at Tier 8, so anything is really going to struggle against that, but your secondaries do more damage than his do, um, and you just have to switch to HE because he's likely going to stay angled to you. And, um, yeah, I, I think you would still rather play Massachusetts than this ship if you're going for the solely competitive environment, but I actually enjoy playing this ship a lot because you get to reload faster and you get torpedoes and hydro. Pushing without hydro is really hard. So this ship allows you to get into some interesting positions because of its concealment and that hydro. I find this ship harder to play than Massachusetts, but um, slightly more interesting. I'm not saying Massachusetts is boring, because Massachusetts, of course, is not boring. But it is... Um, it does have some weaknesses that this ship really excels at, um, and that really does come down to player skill. You need to be good at reading a map, you need to be good at choosing your engagements, and you need to be good at dodging. So, I like this ship, guys, and if you haven't played it for a while, I'd give it a shot, maybe with one of these builds. Um, you can always play it without secondaries, but and go main guns, but I think... I think you're not getting the fullest potential out of this ship if you're not going secondary build. Because the secondaries that pen 32mm base, it's really not that big of an investment to get yourself into these long range secondaries. So, yeah. Um, I think I'm going to stop this video here. As you can see, we got a crack in 150k in this game, and kind of ridiculous, honestly, that they didn't really shoot me. We still don't have 200,000 potential damage, mind you. And we pushed the whole game. So, it's pretty funny when that happens, but that's not, that's really rare. There's usually a cruiser that just wants to set you on fire all game. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, Odin second look, I guess. Um, kind of how I've really figured out how to play it. So, 
Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a good day.